I'm going to break the break, take you straight out to Los Angeles. This is Nick Hanna, the U.S. Attorney in Los Angeles, announcing charges against Attorney Michael Avenatti. Has returned a 36 count indictment against Attorney Michael Avenatti. This indictment is now the operative charging document in the case. The indictment substantially broadens the criminal conduct that was charged in the criminal complaint that was unsealed on March 25th. The charges now being alleged against Mr. Avenatti can be broken down into four general categories. First, wire fraud related to the theft of millions of dollars from five clients, including a paraplegic man who agreed to a multi-million dollar settlement, but has received only a fraction of the money despite the fact that Mr. Avenatti received the full settlement amount over four years ago. Second, tax fraud, including failing to file income tax returns for himself and his law firm. As you will hear in a few minutes from Special Agent in Charge Corner, Mr. Avenatti also allegedly took steps designed to obstruct an IRS collection, hide his coffee company's income, and prevent the IRS from collecting on a series of tax liens and levies filed since 2017. Third, bank fraud, including the allegations in the original complaint that Mr. Avenatti received three loans from a Mississippi bank based on applications supported by phony tax returns. And fourth, bankruptcy fraud. The indictment alleges that after his law firm was forced into bankruptcy over two years ago, Mr. Avenatti has repeatedly lied to the bankruptcy court, to the bankruptcy trustee, and to his creditors by failing to report income his bankrupt firm was receiving. These four areas of criminal conduct alleged in the indictment are all linked to one another because money generated from one set of crimes was used to further other crimes, typically in the form of payments designed to string along victims so as to pre prevent Mr. Avenatti's financial house of cards from collapsing. I will now discuss the various areas of criminal conduct in a bit more detail. The first area of criminal conduct discussed in the indictment alleges that Mr. Avenatti conducted, committed wire fraud <clears throat> in relation to funds, more than $12 million in total, that he received and held in trust on behalf of his clients. While Mr. Avenatti was entitled to attorney's fees for the settlements he negotiated, the indictment alleges that he nevertheless stole millions of dollars that rightfully belonged to his clients. There are five separate client victims in four cases in which money was stolen. The indictment outlines how Mr. Avenatti's embezzlement scheme typically operated. In each of the four cases of embezzlement alleged in the indictment, Mr. Avenatti received money on behalf of clients into client trust accounts, misappropriated the money, and lied to the clients about receiving the money, or in one case, claimed that the money had already been sent to the client. The first client victim detailed in the indictment filed a lawsuit alleging that the County of Los Angeles violated his constitutional rights and that he suffered severe, severe emotional distress and severe physical injuries, including becoming a paraplegic. The victim, who is identified as Client 1 in the indictment, obtained a $4 million settlement, which the County of Los Angeles paid in January 2015 to a trust account controlled by Mr. Avenatti. But more than four years later, Client 1 is still waiting to receive his portion of the settlement. As it turns out, within months after receiving the settlement proceeds in early 2015, Mr. Avenatti had drained the entire $4 million payment from his trust account, using significant portions of these funds to finance his coffee business, his auto racing enterprise, and his own personal lifestyle. From July 2015 through last month, Mr. Avenatti made periodic payments of no more than $1,900 to Client One and paid his rent at various assisted living facilities calling these expenditures, quote-unquote, advances on the settlement. 
According to the indictment, Mr. Avenatti also undermined Client One's efforts to buy a house for himself. Mr. Avenatti had assured Client One that he could use the money from the settlement to buy the property. But Mr. Avenatti later falsely told Client One that the settlement was not available because the county had not yet approved a trust for the disabled client. The house Client One wanted to buy fell out of escrow because the money already paid by the county had been pilfered by Mr. Avenatti. And to further complicate matters for Client One, Mr. Avenatti, who promised to respond to a Social Security Administration inquiry related to Client One's disability, failed to do so. And two months ago, Client One lost his Social Security benefits. The other three client matters outlined in the indictment regarding Mr. Avenatti's alleged theft of millions of dollars are similar. Mr. Avenatti received money on behalf of clients and simply took the money to finance his businesses and his personal expenses. In one case, after receiving $2.75 million for a client, Mr. Avenatti allegedly took nearly all that money and used it to pay for his portion of a private jet, a jet, incidentally, that we seized yesterday. With respect to the tax matters, Special Agent Corner will provide you with the details of the numerous tax offenses alleged in the indictment. But I want to note that some of the money withheld from the paychecks of employees of his coffee company, money that was, was being held in trust and was supposed to be used to pay payroll taxes, was instead used by Mr. Avenatti in relation to other crimes alleged in the indictment, including making lulling payments to clients for whom he had stolen, from whom he had stolen settlement money. Following Mr. Avenatti's arrest on March 25th, I discussed the facts related to an alleged bank fraud set forth in the criminal complaint. The indictment restates these offenses, which began in 2014, which when Mr. Avenatti allegedly defrauded the People's Bank, a federally insured financial institution in Mississippi, by making false representations about his income. Very simply, these false claims about his income were made by submitting fictitious income tax returns for both himself and his law firm. These personal tax returns submitted to the bank were clearly fake because as reflected in the indictment, Mr. Avenatti failed to file any personal income tax returns since 2010. Moreover, the law firm tax return was fraudulent because it claimed millions of dollars in gross income more than what was actually reported to the IRS. In the fourth area of criminal conduct alleged in the indictment, Mr. Avenatti allegedly filed, under penalty of perjury, a series of documents in United States Bankruptcy Court that fraudulently understated the amount of money that was coming into his bankrupt law firm. The indictment also alleges that Mr. Avenatti lied during under oath testimony that he had not received any fees in relation to a particular case when he, in fact, had received those fees. The bankruptcy case is related to the theft of client funds because Mr. Avenatti allegedly used money stolen from one client to pay his creditors, including to pay off an IRS tax lien at issue in the bankruptcy. If convicted of the 36 crimes alleged in the indictment, Mr. Avenatti would face a statutory maximum sentence of 333 years in federal prison, plus a mandatory two-year consecutive term for an identity theft count. Of course, the ultimate sentence would be up to a judge following a conviction. At this point, I want to stress that Mr. Avenatti is presumed innocent unless and until he is proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in court. The indictment also contains two forfeiture allegations in the event of his, that, in the event of his conviction, seek to have proceeds of Mr. Avenatti's fraudulent conduct forfeited to the government. In relation to this, as I mentioned, authorities seized a $5 million jet that Mr. Avenatti co-owned, a purchase he made with money allegedly stolen from a client. I want to express my appreciation to the IRS criminal investigators who have done excellent work on this case. 